We're learning new details this morning about Miriam Carey, the woman who lost her life after leading police on a car chase from the White House to Capitol Hill. She was 34-year-old dental hygienist, a new mother, and most tellingly, she had struggled with mental illness after the birth of her young daughter. Still, the details fail to explain what brought this young mom to drive into a White House barricade, and you see the video there of how it all kind of unfolded. Joining us now to talk more about this are Miriam Carey's sisters, Valerie Carey and Amy Carey Jones, as well as their attorney, Eric Saunders. Thank you so much for being here this morning. I can only imagine that it is no easier to see that video, video and to talk about this as it was today, today as it was last week. How is the family doing this morning? Um, we're holding up as best as possible under the circumstances. It's still surreal and of course um, until we actually see our sister's body, which we haven't actually seen her yet, um, it, the reality, the gravity of it is just going to be that much more impactful when, it, when we actually do see her. Do you have any expectation of when that would happen? When you'll be able to see your, your sister's body? Um, we're not sure. Um, we went to identify her and then we have to get through the necessary paperwork and autopsies and mm -hmm. things like that. So. We're in the process of um, also making a funeral arrangement so that we can have the body transported. It's just a lot of steps that we need to take before we can actually see her. Of course, that's totally understandable. One thing that I know a lot of people that stick with a lot of people uh, after seeing this kind of terrifying ordeal play out is her young daughter, your young niece. Yes. Um, the fact that she was in that car with her the entire time. How is she now? Are you trying to win custody of her? Where does that stand? Well, we're not really going to get into um, that part of it. We just, we're just aware that she's safe, and we will continually keep in contact with her. Where she'll end up, we're not sure yet. Um, you don't know yet? We're not yet. We're not sure. Okay. Well, I know that you've had very little time to begin digesting the details and what this means and how this squares with the woman that you've known all of your lives. What, what sense have you made of this to this point? Does it, does it make any sense? to Does this connect at all to the woman that you've known for so long? It actually doesn't make any sense, and um, the question really isn't why was she in Washington. Mm -hmm. The question is why was she killed in Washington, and all I can see when I look at that video is my sister is afraid, and she's frightened, and she's trying to get out of there. She's confused. Um, she doesn't know which way to go, and I couldn't, I just can't imagine what she was thinking as she's trying to get away from bullet shots. And you are a former NYPD officer. Because you're looking at this video and you know your sister. What, we know that you believe that the use of force by officers was unjustified. When you see the video, how do you think that officers could have reacted any differently? Well, my sister didn't have a gun. She was not shooting a weapon from her vehicle. So um, deadly physical force of a weapon being fired upon her car, uh, I don't believe was justified. We can, we can always take a look at this with hindsight being much clearer than in that moment. But when you look at that, do you also acknowledge that your sister was contributing to how this outcome happened? Absolutely I not. And, and, and we want to we put a stop to it at this point. Mm -hmm. She didn't contribute to anything. She's a, a U.S. citizen, and she had absolutely every right to be in the nation's capital. The police officers have protocols. The fact that someone may be mostly disturbed, which they don't know at the time, those are all factors you're trained for. What happened here is a failure of the training because that still doesn't give you the right to use deadly physical force. Every major police department has the same policy. You can't shoot at a fleeing person because you have to factor in that they may not understand, they may be confused, they may be lost. There's a whole bunch of factors you have to consider and you just don't shoot at a vehicle. That's not the way it works. This is clearly one of many of the questions that you still have Absolutely. and will be asking going forward. Some of the focus has turned to her mental health. In the last time that you saw her, the last time that you spoke with her, did she seem unwell? She seemed fine, and the fact that they, they're focusing only on her mental, mental health, that doesn't define an individual. Mm -hmm. She was under treatment, she was the same loving person that we knew, and she had, you know, her life challenges, but that doesn't mean that she still wasn't a person. She seemed fine when we last spoke to her. There were no signs of delusion or erratic behavior no voices, none of those things are real, you know, conversations for us. And that's some, that's some of what has come from her boyfriend, saying that she had been suffering from delusions, that she thought that President Obama had her town and her house under lockdown and under surveillance. She, you, you've never heard anything from her that raised, your, raised eyebrows in that way? No, no. And once again, 
when people are making statements, mm -hmm. you just have to look at the source of where those statements are coming from. You're questioning her boyfriend then? Absolutely. So what, what kind of treatment was she under? Was she in the middle of treatment? Was she taking medications? Where well, was she in her they treatment? Don't, well, see, that's the problem. Mm -hmm. They don't know at this point. No one knows. No one can answer that question. And I heard lots of speculation, and for the most part, I haven't injected myself in these conversations like this, but no one knows. This is all speculation. And as soon as she was receiving treatment, that still doesn't answer the question about the use of force. That's the ultimate question. There, obviously, investigation continues, is ongoing. Mm -hmm. Do you have, how do you want your sister to be remembered? Because when she is splashed up against the headlines and her picture is associated with a scary ordeal like this, um, I'm sure that's very different than how the family knows her. Well, how do you want your sister to be remembered? I want my sister to be remembered as the fun, loving, full of life person that she was, young, energetic, full of aspirations. Um, my sister is going to be greatly missed. She um, was a very integral part of our lives, and that's a part that's not going to be replaced. How about you, Amy? Yes. I believe the same thing. Um, we spoke a lot. Um, we had a very great relationship. Um, I'm going to miss being with her and just seeing her enthusiasm for life. Um, she was a